And Amy says, I'm 29, and my husband and I are saving for our next house. I'm having a difficult time convincing him to increase our Roth IRA contributions to the maximum allowed instead of saving everything for a down payment. So which of us is right? We're settling arguments <laughs> today on the Get Ready for the Future show. I'm not going to get into that, but let's talk about uh, the, the things that Amy and her husband should be considering. Well, as, let's first of all say that, you know, uh, for law enforcement officers, their worst call is a domestic dispute. And, <laughs> yeah. and we're not going to get ourselves in the middle of a domestic dispute. But we do want to walk through some things with you to try to understand a little bit more about what's going on. Uh, I think uh, the big question that I would ask is, how much are you saving now? Mm. And what's the differential between what you're saving and what you could save in this Roth IRA? Now, Scott, the maximum contribution for for uh, folks like Amy who are 29, married and filing jointly is $6,500 a year. So, you know, we're not probably talking about a lot of money here, but let's kind of walk through this. Assuming that you're doing half right now, so $3,200 a year, you might wait and use the equity in your current home as a down payment on the new home. I think that if you said that our next home, so I'm going to make the assumption that you have a, a home currently and it has some equity in it. So that could be your down payment. Also, I think it's important that, that if your house payment going forward, the next house payment is higher, how will that affect your, your savings? I think that's part of something Scott yeah. called lifestyle inflation, yeah. where people, as they make more money, they tend to increase their lifestyle, increase the value of their home uh, or whatever the case may be. They end up spending more money. And sometimes the savings component can be an afterthought. Yeah. I had a realtor years ago when I was looking for a house, John, tell me that you want to you wanna really stretch and get as much house as you can because you'll grow into it. Well, that may or may not happen, right? <laughs> I mean, it did for me. Uh, the assumption was correct, but I don't think you want to make a mortgage payment decision based on what's the on the outer end of what you can afford today. Because like you said, what it did do to me was really I did reel, reel back on retirement contributions yeah. for some time until I grew into it. And that was not a good thing from a retirement perspective. I would say this to Amy, you can never save too much for retirement. But you do need to probably find some life and future life balance, right? So that that's where we're really talking about. I think the retirement you can't you can't walk away from it. You have to have a, a savings plan in place. And how do you know how if you're saving enough, right? And we don't know about our 401k or anything like that. We're talking only about the Roth IRA. We really need a holistic uh, look at how much is going into future retirement savings for you and your husband and where will that put you at your desired retirement date have you given much thought to that do you want to retire early are you planning to work until you're 65 and those are hard things to answer when you're 29 but they deserve a little bit of attention you at least have to have a target yeah i think so scott and i think that you've got to examine your priorities very carefully amy i think that retirement is a necessity, but a new home may or may not be a necessity. Yeah. I don't really understand the, the dynamics of your family or anything of that nature, but think about the, the issue of instant gratification versus a long-term plan. It's very gratifying to move into a new home. I've done it twice, and, and so it's a very gratifying feeling. But here is the, the real bottom line. According to bankrate.com, 74% of Americans are not saving enough for retirement, and they see that as a big regret. A lot of people who arrive at retirement say, I wish I had saved more money for retirement. Well, you can't go back and undo that. I think you've got to take care of what you know you're going to have to have, which is retirement first, and then accommodate what you need through other means. And, and one other thing I'll say about this, Scott, is that even if the husband prevails in this case. I believe it was her husband that was wanting to save into the Roth IRA. I'm sorry, uh, the wife is wanting yes. to save in the Roth IRA. Even if she prevails, it's not a one and done, you uh, fait accompli that there is you know, no way to, to go back on that. As a matter of fact, the earnings, this is a little known fact, mm -hmm. but the earnings in the Roth IRA have to stay in there. But the principle of a Roth IRA can be extracted from a Roth IRA at any time and not have interest or, or 
taxes are penalties associated with it. You already have paid taxes on that money, so it's free and clear to come out of the Roth IRA. Now, is that a good idea to do? Probably not, right. but if you have to have it for a have-to-have-it down payment on a have-to-have-it house, then you may have that alternative. So I don't know that we solved this problem, Scott, but there are some things to think about mm -hmm. here, and I, I'm always going to come down on erring on the side of investing for the future yeah. and trying to maintain what you've got as long as you can. With that little-known detail about the Roth, I say it all the time, it is the most flexible and most underutilized retirement vehicle out there. Yes. It, it is good to get money into a Roth IRA no matter who you are. And one little caveat, too, when you were talking about lifestyle inflation before before we move on to our next question, uh, you have to think about the other costs associated with that home too, not just the mortgage payment, right? Yeah. I mean, the maintenance on it, the utility bills are going to go up if it's a bigger house. I mean, you're assuming that they're going to get a bigger house. Uh, the taxes are going to be more. The insurance is going to be more. The yard maintenance is going to yeah. be more. You'll have a bigger yard, and you'll have probably live in a nicer neighborhood, so you want to keep it up, you know, and all of that type mm -hmm. of thing. Uh, I shudder to think how much I spend on things that are not my mortgage at yes. my house. I once walked around when I when we built our uh, our house several years ago now, and we stepped up from a pretty significant in pretty significant size, and for the first time since it was a newer home. Uh, we had the can lights everywhere, right? That yeah. you had the, the seven. Back then, they were still fluorescent. They weren't uh, LED, so they were a little cheaper. They were about 6 or $7 a piece. And I remember walking through the house, counting how many I had, <laughs> and thinking about just the annual cost to replace those and how significant that was at the time to me. So you do have to consider uh, more than just that mortgage payment. Amy, thanks for your question. We hope you ha we hope we helped uh, give you some insight. I uh, can't tell you exactly what to do, but certainly can give you some things to consider. <laughs> 